Hi, very good morning. I am Dr. Janak Patel, MD, general physician. Today we will be talking about one of the another interesting topic, which is now considered good number of time as an epidemic. And we being Indian, we are more prone to that disorder. And it is very common in India. We call metabolic syndrome or cardiometabolic syndrome or also called a syndrome X. And it is like an iceberg. There are a lot of comorbid condition which can be there along with cardiometabolic syndrome. So we'll be discussing on that topic. Syndrome X or metabolic syndrome or cardiometabolic syndrome. Same definition, etiology, pathophysiology, clinical features, investigations, differential diagnosis, treatment and complications. By definition, a person who is hypertensive, where blood pressure is more than 140 by 90, dyslipidemia, where TG more than 150, HDL less than 35, central obesity, where BMI is more than 30, waist girth is more than 94 centimeter, and waist hip ratio is more than 0.9. Associated with impaired glucose tolerance, insulin resistance, IFG, or IGT, or person is diabetic, where fasting is more than 110 and post-glucose is more than 200. And WHA had added one more criteria that is microalbuminuria. So when all these criteria are present together, that is defined as metabolic syndrome. American Heart Association has got same criteria but mentioned in a different pattern. Elevated waist ratio in men more than 102 or 40 inches. In women more than 35 inches or more than 88 centimeter. Elevated triglyceride more than 150. Reduced HDL in male less than 40 and in women less than 50. Blood pressure equal to or greater than 130-85. Or use of medication for hypertension person is already on medications. Elevated fasting glucose equal to or greater than 100. Or use of medication for hyperglycemia. These are the five criteria which are being considered by American Heart Association. So there are little modification between this criteria and this criteria. WHO puts insulin resistance plus two of the following, like central obesity or we call abdominal obesity where waist hip ratio is more than 0.9 in male and in female more than 0.85 or BMI is more than 30. There is hypertriglyceridemia more than 150. HDL is less than 35 in male and 39 in woman. Blood pressure is more than 140-90 or equal to 140-90. Or there is a documented use of antihypertensive therapy. Fasting glucose is elevated. We call impaired glucose tolerance or impaired fasting glucose. Or there is an insulin resistance or person is diabetic. And microalbuminuria or urinary albumin creatine in ratio is 30 milligram per gram or albumin creatine in rate is 20 microgram per minute. These are the criteria which are being utilized by WHO. So WHO says that presence of one of the following that is diabetes or IGT or IFG or insulin resistance plus any two of the following, that is blood pressure elevation, dyslipidemia, central obesity, or microalbuminuria. While European guidelines says that 
insulin resistance with central obesity or dyslipidemia or hypertension or fasting glucose more than 110. But nearly all groups comes to same. International Diabetic Federation says waist circumference more than 94 in male and more than 80 in female with any two of the followings triglyceride elevated HDL low than 40 in male and less than 50 in female elevated glucose level fasting glucose more than 100 all person is detected to be diabetic hypertension more than 130 85 all person is on treatment for any of the above that is mainly for hypertension and for diabetes mellitus so these were the criteria utilized by idf association atp3 guideline says that metabolic syndrome is three or more of the following that is waist circumference triglyceride ldl blood pressure or fasting glucose so minimum three criteria should be there from out of this and this is by ada guidelines that is American Diabetic Association. Whichever you use, all comes to same. The figures are changing. There are few terminology which are commonly utilized, interchangeable with this. That is syndrome X or metabolic syndrome or cardiometabolic syndrome. These are the three common words which are being utilized. There are a lot of other words like cardiovascular dysmetabolic syndrome insulin resistance syndrome, multiple metabolic syndrome, bare belly syndrome. This was the first name given by the scientist called re that re syndrome. Then there was one term called deadly quartet because there are four components, plurimetabolic syndrome, new world syndrome. Then there was one name called as a chaos that is utilized in Australia. C for coronary artery, H for hypertension, a for adult onset of diabetes, O for obesity, and S for stroke. These are all the different terms which are being utilized. But the common word is syndrome X, metabolic or cardiometabolic syndrome. These are the common words which are being utilized most frequently. As far as etiology is concerned, it is polygenic and environmental factor. Any environmental factor, mainly overnutrition, or we call dietary factors and sedentary lifestyles. Sensitivity to insulin will vary widely in the general population, and insulin mediated glucose uptake by the cell is compromised. Beta cell fails, and insulin is insufficient, so it leads to hyperglycemia. So, because of obesity, there is a triad we call as a hyperinsulin, insulin secretion increases, but this insulin is not sufficient enough to control glucose, so it produces hyperglycemia. Secondary to obesity, there is an increase in LDL and there is an elevated apolipoprotein B that will have effect on coronary and blood vessels resulting into atherosclerosis we call insulin resistance leads to atherosclerosis so person will be hypertensive there will be hyperlipidemia so abdominal obesity leading to metabolic complications and that leads to increased risk of coronary heart disease so this is secondary due to sedentary lifestyle and that is the most common factor which is playing a role producing insulin resistance so the first factor is lifestyle which is accounting for almost 60 percent medical conditions which results into obesity etc accounts for only eight percent hereditary factor is 15 percent and environmental factor is 17 percent and these are responsible for ending up with metabolic syndrome. So you can see that lifestyle modification 
will help a lot. So lifestyle changes like overeating, sedentary lifestyle is the prime factor which will end up with obesity, insulin resistance and then metabolic syndrome. So metabolic syndrome is a lifestyle disease where excess of diet, low physical activity like this, sleep disturbances that is sleep apnea, increase intake of alcohol, sedentary lifestyle, circadian disturbances, sleep restriction, high calorie intake etc. will end up with metabolic syndrome. This is one of the common factors high calorie. So sedentary lifestyle, some of the medical disorders, some of the genetic factor, some of the drugs which increases the obesity, lack of sleep, hormonal factor, aging, attitudes, social conditions and poor diet. All these factors will play a role and it will end up with obesity. Among inherited factor, some mutant gene may be responsible, but more commonly in acquired sedentary lifestyle that is inactivity, overeating, aging, some of the medications, hyperglycemia and increased free fatty acids. That will lead to insulin resistance. And secondary to insulin resistance, you end up with lot of other problems. So among acquired causes, overweight or we call central obesity, physical inactivity, aging, ethnicity, high carbohydrate diet, pro-inflammatory state, some of the hormones, even oral contraceptive pills, lipodystrophic disorders, etc. can end up with metabolic. So we have got a modifiable cause, non-modifiable cause. Some of the non-modifiable cause, we are all aware of it. That is age, race or ethnicity. We call gender, female are more prone as compared to male and strong family history. While modifiable cause, overweight, abnormal lipid metabolism, inflammation, hypercoagulation, hypertension, smoking, physical inactivity, unhealthy diet, and insulin resistance. So that insulin resistance will end up with hypertension, obesity, hyperinsulinemia, diabetes, hypertriglyceridemia, increase in LDL level, low HDL level, and hypercoagulability. All this will accelerate atherosclerosis and there will be endothelial dysfunction resulting into hypertension, ischemic heart disease, etc. And that's why it is also labeled as cardiovascular, this metabolic syndrome. But the common term utilized syndrome X or metabolic syndrome or cardiometabolic syndrome. So overnutrition and physical activity is one of the prime factor. We have already mentioned it will end up with insulin resistance, hypertension, dyslipidemia, hyperglycemia, hyperinsulinemia, inflammation, impaired fibrinolysis, endothelial dysfunction, which will have accelerated atherosclerosis, increased hypercoagulability, and finally it will end with cardiovascular disease and death. So these are all the things which happens and there is an increased risk 200 times increased risk of cerebrovascular disease which will be secondary due to insulin resistance. So these are some of the things hypertension we call diabetes, visceral obesity, dyslipidemia etc. Microalbuminuria all the factors they are responsible for complications. There is a vicious cycle. There are a lot of different factors which are being 
established so it can be right from atherosclerosis dyslipidemia hypertension which will be triggered by insulin resistance so insulin resistance intact pro insulin there is a increase in inflammatory markers there is hyperglycemia that will stimulate interleukin 6 tnf alpha etc leading to atherosclerosis and dyslipidemia hypertension there is a abnormal beta cell functions which will increase the insulin production pro insulin levels are increased that leads to adipogenesis lipid cells are elevated that will end up with adiposity and obesity even adiponectin leptins are playing a role so anti insulin hormones decreased level of adiponectin will result into insulin resistance this is a vicious cycle which will play a role in metabolic syndrome these are some of the factor we have, which we have already mentioned nutrition age race genetic factors fetal programming so there are cytokines these cytokines can aggravate atherosclerosis also cytokines will have effect on adipose tissue and there will be release of leptin which will have effect on brain where acth and cortisol will be secreted and they will result into central obesity hypertension and insulin resistance as well as beta cell will be also stimulated and they will increase glucose intolerance there will be insulin resistance which will also increase glucose intolerance and secondary due to obesity also there will be glucose intolerance and this will result into what we call as diabetes mellitus liver will have a release of acute phase response where you will have a abnormal production of lipids hdl production will be reduced and you will have a increased production of ldl lipoprotein a etc so this will be all vicious cycle which will be playing a role in metabolic syndrome and atherosclerosis so all this we have already mentioned in previous slides insulin resistance dyslipidemia hypertension visceral obesity pro inflammatory markers pro thrombotic conditions endothelial dysfunctions igt and ifg all this factor will end up with metabolic syndrome usually in insulin resistance there are two things which are playing a major role is obesity and diabetes and whenever there is obesity and diabetes along with insulin resistance secondary to insulin resistance it increases two times the cardiovascular disease risk if there is an excessive obesity and four times if there is a diabetes mellitus and finally this is how it ends up we have already mentioned in few other lectures that is insulin resistance will end up with igt further you will have a onset of diabetes and then you will start getting complications like atherosclerosis hyperglycemia hypertension and then you start getting other complications like micro and macro retinopathy nephropathy neuropathy and then you get involvement of kidney coronary artery peripheral artery retinal blood vessels and finally they succumb to death very frequently because of coronary artery disease so these are all the things which we see in cardio metabolic syndrome which we have already mentioned insulin resistance obesity hyperglycemia hypertension endothelial dysfunction dyslipidemia pro inflammatory stage pro coagulant stage premature atherosclerosis and coronary artery disease we know very well these are the things which is prone to excessive intake of calorie stores like this mcdonalds etc 
and such foods along with excessive alcohol soft drinks etc soft drinks will have a high calorie lack of vegetable and fruits yes excess of calorie all that play a role we already mentioned the clinical parts of metabolic syndrome central obesity hypertension hypertriglyceridema low hdl insulin resistance with abnormal igt or ifg or person is diabetic if all these features are together we label that as metabolic syndrome or syndrome x there is always a question can we identify insulin resistance yes insulin resistance will show you all these features so you can this will be the features and this will suggest that person is having insulin resistance so hyperglycemia where ppg is elevated fasting is normal more in favor of insulin resistance obesity bmi more than 23 waist circumference more than 90 insulin resistance triglyceride elevated hdl low and low density lipoprotein are elevated it is in favor of insulin resistance cluster of all this together metabolic syndrome hypertension usually is a feature recent weight increase is one in favor c peptide level elevated it suggests increase homa marker and if a person is on treatment like exercise and insulin sensitizer and you get a response again that suggests there is an insulin resistance so we already mentioned all these conditions abdominal obesity dyslipidemia blood pressure elevation insulin resistance by means of a glucose intolerance pro atherosclerotic stage pro thrombotic stage pro inflammatory stage all these features are suggestive so person usually will complain of following things very commonly fatigue inability to focus brain fogginess high blood sugar intestinal bloating sensations sleep disturbances weight gain triglyceride elevation elevation of blood pressure increased pro inflammatory markers depression acanthosis nigricans and increase hunger these are all this is acanthosis nigricans all these are in favor of insulin resistance and there may be associated features good number of time may be seen along with metabolic syndrome like colorectal cancer liver cancer hyperuricemia or gout diabetes increase incidence of stroke mi congestive heart failure coronary artery disease or non alcoholic fatty liver disease cirrhosis etc so these are some of the common things which may be associated along with metabolic like diabetes coronary artery disease congestive heart failure mi atrial fibrillation colorectal liver breast pancreas or endometrial carcinoma stroke alzheimer depression as far as cns is concerned sleep apnea uric acid elevation systemic inflammation may be seen together and this is a slide which shows you all things together and there is one more thing which is added is polycystic ovary disease may be seen in female diagnosis is done by certain clinical examination like waist circumference laboratory picture triglyceride fasting blood sugar hdl level ldl level etc blood pressure estimation will also help you to find out whether the blood pressure is elevated or not waist circumference becomes very important and waist hip ratio is also of importance then looking for what we call as obesity 
this is the slide which shows you how the waist circumference should be measured ideally if you don't measure properly it gives you a false reading where you can have a false interpretation as far as obesity is concerned so follow these steps properly and then only the measurement should be taken so step 1 step 2 step 3 step 4 step 5 step 6 5 and 6 and then you measure the final reading and then only you can label that person is having increased waist circumference or not this is typical acanthosis nigricans which can be seen at the neck region axilla knuckles etc pcos is quite common finding which you can see in a female and this is associated with increased insulin resistance and obesity and this is one of the classical disorder where you got increased ovarian androgens adrenal androgens are also elevated good number of time and it will result into infertility hirsutism and insulin resistance that will be very commonly seen in pcos we already told you that secondary due to metabolic syndrome there is increase atherosclerosis and that will end up with cardiovascular problems unstable angina acute coronary syndrome mi and coronary death acute or we call sudden cardiac death as far as cn is concerned stroke quite common peripheral arterial disease that is critical ischemia so these are the common things which will be seen secondary due to atherosclerosis so cns involvement cardiovascular involvement involvement of kidney and peripheral arterial disease and even involvement of the retina will be commonly seen secondary due to atherosclerosis so ideally the investigations are mainly for lipids and blood sugar while other are clinical examinations like weight circumference weight height etc so if a waist circumference is more than 40 inches in male and more than 35 in female or we call now in indian population they take more than 90 cm is definitely taken as positive and in female more than 80 cm which is less than this 40 inches which is definitely less than 40 inches now this is the criteria utilized in india and in laboratory parameter triglyceride more than 150 hdl less than 40 in male and less than 50 in female and fasting glucose more than 100 is considered as abnormal and if bmi is more than 30 it is considered as abnormal so this slide i have already shown you before how can we identify insulin resistance i have already shown you these are some of the things which will detect early evidence of atherosclerosis like carotid intima media thickness then mri of aortic and carotid plaques coronary calcium score abi we call ankle brachial index then brachial vasoreactive by ultrasound then vascular compliance tonometry etc and these are all the risk factors which can be present as far as management is concerned first reduce the underlying cause mainly the obesity by diet exercise total lifestyle modification and in physical activity aerobic exercise and you can use the drugs like bicarbonates glitazones etc which will increase the insulin sensitivity so that can be utilized and treat the associated condition like hyperlipidemia hypertension prothrombotic stage and hyperlipidemia we have already mentioned and if a person is diabetic rigid control of diabetes so all those things should be done together along with that stop smoking oral hypoglycemic agent for hyperglycemia you can use insulin 
for hyperlipidemia, statin and fibrates, for hypertension, antihypertensive drugs, which can be ACE inhibitor, ARB, and for preventing complication, aspirin can be utilized. Diet, exercise, and lifestyle modification is a prime thing. So treatment of obesity, treatment of lipid, mid, lipid disorder, hypertension, control of blood sugar, physical inactivity, stop smoking, etc. becomes the prime goal. So treatment of abdominal obesity, insulin resistance, lipid, blood pressure and blood sugar control becomes the prime component. So primary Lifestyle modification, calorie restriction, physical activity, and change in diet. Secondary, control of triglyceride, and attain blood pressure goal. As far as drug is concerned, for control of lipids, papargama, fibrates, statin, niacin, aspirin, ACE inhibitor can be utilized. So therapeutic approach will be diagnosis, HULDL goal, and try to control hypertension, hyperlipidemia, blood pressure, and diabetes. So all those should be controlled. So treatment should be to elevated TG, Bring down TG, elevate HDL, control of blood pressure, prothrombotic stage should be controlled and even if a person is diabetic, that should be controlled. So, we call lifestyle modification, be active, have a good sleep, manage stress, regular exercise, stop smoking, Reduce weight, control of blood pressure. So loss of weight becomes very important. So blood pressure should be controlled nicely. Control lipids, weight reduction, regular exercise, stop smoking, stop alcohol. So obesity, dyslipidemia, hypertension, diabetes and risk factors. Obesity can be controlled by lifestyle modification, regular exercise, along with drugs and bariatric surgery. Dyslipidemia by statins, hypertension by ACE inhibitor, ARB. Diabetes by oral hypoglycemic agent, insulin. And modifiable risk factors should be controlled rigidly. And for atherosclerotic complications, aspirin, clopidogrel, antioxidant, and if required, anticoagulants also. For obesity, you can go for surgical intervention, which we call as Rooks and Y gastric bypass weight reduction surgery, that is Rooks and Y, bypass surgery, gastric mending, etc. They also mention in another way ABCD, EF, A for diabetic control and aspirin, B for blood pressure control, C for cholesterol and smoking control, smoking cessation, D for diabetes and pre-diabetic management, E for exercise and F for food choices. Secondary due to diabetes mellitus, hypertension, dyslipidemia, there is an effect on cardiovascular system and there is an accelerated atherosclerosis. So that gives rise to certain complications like coronary artery disease, atherosclerotic complications, complications secondary due to diabetes, 
सेरिब्रोवास्कुलर कॉम्प्लिकेशंस थैंक्स फॉर टेकिंग आउट टाइम आई नो दैट योर टाइम इज वैल्यूएबल एंड आई अप्रिशिएट यू फॉर स्पेंडिंग सम ऑफ दैट टाइम विथ मी एंड आई होप दिस लेक्चर विल बी वेरी हेल्पफुल टू यू